And we're back. Ew. So, uh, you guys wake up the next morning. Oh. Good, we have a mean stab in the back. <laughs> right? <laughs> the constant fear. Arya looks like a sexy dippy today. I guess we set off then. <laughs> okay. And we head back to Silverbrook. Okay. We're starting so... to, like, fucking set up her, her painting supplies, like, on the roof of the building, and is painting the rest of the town. <laughs> God okay. Mary, what the fuck? <laughs> She'll just do. Just... Four hours rest, straight up on the roof. Just, just make me an athletics check, because there's literally no way to get on the roof, so... <laughs> <laughs> we will make it on that roof. Okay. <laughs> it oh, it God. takes you it takes you a while, but you get up on the roof, and then when everybody else is like, "Come on down, it's time to get down," you're like, "This is gonna take a while." <laughs> oh my God. God. Uh, I'm just jumping through Calaris' arms. <laughs> yeah, I'll catch you no. or something. I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? No, It'll be that's fine. a bad idea. Very I mean, I bad do... idea. I actually do just jump off the roof. Oh okay. my fucking god! Oh, for God's ah! <laughs> what is wrong with you people? Make me make me an acrobatics check. Uh... Sure, she'll be fine. <laughs> Maybe. God, no wonder you fucking know. lost to the dragonborn if you're this. Wait, fucking actually, reckless. no. Wow. You have slow fall, wow. don't you? Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you you just jump flawlessly into her arms anyway, because <laughs> you have slow fall. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I can't say. <laughs> oh, this is why you lost to the dragonborn. Her arms. That's a great sentence. <laughs> this, this is why you lost to the dragonborn. Because <laughs> you're all reckless maniacs. That was incredibly okay. graceful. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Uh, uh. Okay. So, eventually you get on the road. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I forgot one thing because it would, this would have been the perfect time to let Zuda read the books. I don't know oh. if anybody cares. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, unless Lothari wants to stop you, I don't know if there's a scene there. Um, I think if Lothari, if Lothari sees them kind of exchanging the books, um, she would kind of make a comment to uh, Grimm that, like, um, just to kind of make sure that Zudar isn't the kind of person that like we should shouldn't be letting read like secrets to like mass production of weapons. <laughs> oh, don't don't worry. Like as you may have noticed, uh, he's not like very big on the whole actual fighting thing. He's more he's the kind of person that like wants to learn about the world and. Um, yeah, that's that's his main focus. He's, yes, he's uh, mainly studying the world. More more specifically, you know that he he has signed a a vow of non interference as part of his religious oh. code, uh, to the point where like he will literally just watch and let things happen rather than actually interfere with them. Yeah. He will only yeah, interfere like... when when he feels that uh, like innocent people are in danger or feel like he himself is in danger. someone. Handing someone the weapons of well mass destruction might be a little over, a little bit overdoing it, but I feel like that would be interfering somewhat. Well, I'm still of the mind that it wouldn't be the worst idea to let me hold on to the book once this is all over. Well, I wanna. You already know how we uh, how it's created, don't you? Well, the book detailed uh, detailed it in a little bit more precision, but either way, it's it'll it'll be safe in 
the hands. I don't think anybody would be looking through the bags of an old woman to find the secrets of ancient for fire elemental forges. That's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. Uh, not sure. Well, like I guess you you are you are the reason why we kind of want them or wanted it in the first place. Well, you... Look, I'll, I'll just keep it in the bag, so, like, until we're back there, then, back, then we can just sort everything out, and then there's no, no arguments. Or, well, there will be plenty of arguments, maybe, probably, <laughs> but... Yeah, well, that sounds... that's fine with me. I'm no... I'm in no rush. Yeah. Like, right... Right now we uh we have a kit to show some uh, sword moves because I assume this happened that evening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you say kid, he's like thirty years old. <laughs> I kinda like, like Lithari kinda like stretches and cracks her knuckles and then cracks her neck back and forth. I mean to Lithari that is a kid. Like oh yeah, definitely. Very much a kid. And he's also less than half my age, so that makes you a kid. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. That's that's fair. Humans are children to most of your party. <laughs> I was gonna say. I mean, you're all children to me. Yeah. Except, like, Von wow. Ball. Yeah, I was gonna um, say. Well, perhaps the fiery can, like, challenge that a little. Well, Lothari obviously <laughs> is an elder. Well, yeah, that's uh, yeah. fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A a Aya's baby brother is almost as old as Kalaris and V, so... <laughs> yeah. Well... <laughs> yeah. Elves, man. Yeah. Fucking elves. Uh, so yeah, you can... Uh, you would normally take five tiles of movement, but technically you're one tile lower, so six tiles of movement for the start of the day. And... Uh... Okay. Again, super low roll. Uh, so yeah, have your have your five tiles of movement on the, the map. Nobody's gonna do that. I had to count. There we go. Okay. Let me live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let the ranger count the tiles. Okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. So. Uh, it's hard to count five to five. Jeez. Yeah, everybody, everybody expend a ration for the day. Um, nothing particularly noteworthy happens on your day's worth of travels. Um, you uh, basically you the, about halfway through uh, about halfway through the day. Um, basically, as your uh, Traveling along one of one of the many ranger paths through the forest, um, a a large brown bear rounds the corner uh, and is basically like right on top of you guys, and the the like ev everybody sort of freezes as this brown bear comes around the corner, and the bear just sort of like it contemplates you guys, thinks better of it, and walks back up slowly back off the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what happens when you have a oh, fucking dragonborn in your party. Yeah. <laughs> He's wearing really, really shiny armor. Yeah. Maybe the bear likes shiny. <laughs> I guess not in this case. I don't think. I think the bear likes shinies when it's just shinies. I don't think the bear likes shinies being <laughs> worn by a six foot tall. I don't think bears are particularly even sword. interested in shinies, but sure. Yeah, that was just. Oh, yeah. If you guys had a picnic basket, it might be different. But <laughs> we had we had a big uh, jar of honey. So yeah, uh, again another day. I oh, need a Constitution saving throw out of you, please. Okay. Uh, I'm really worried what happens when I don't. Uh, well. At the start of this day, anyway, you're going to uh, you gain a level of exhaustion. Lovely. Uh, 
yeah, uh, m much like yesterday, you feel you feel the same as as the day before, except significantly worse because it's been for two days now. <laughs> Next day. Six tiles of movement. And... Uh, okay. Uh, where's my... There it is. Okay. Uh, in the early morning of your travels, uh, you guys, uh, you come across, uh, as you are, uh, traveling back towards, uh, Silverbrook, uh, you come across a party of rangers. Uh. I guess we we'll just hail them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then move on. Okay. Uh Okay. Uh they do not recognize you. <laughs> uh and they uh they approach uh well, I guess they, I guess they approach your group, see Aya and uh Lithari. And sort of ask who you are and what are you doing here in Elvish. Um, <laughs> like such fly saying, um, we are on our way back to the Silverbrook, having won a short investigation of the swamps east of here. They look uh, at you we, quizzically, <laughs> and I'll sort of like show, I'll sort of gesture to Lethari saying, uh, we were. The four of us were escorting her, that like gesture to Lothari, that to uh, to a location she wanted to have a look at, essentially. Yes, they were kind enough to uh, help an old lady. Help an old lady. <laughs> okay. You, you aren't you aren't telling telling lies, so they're just sort of like, oh, okay, very well, <laughs> carry on. Just sort of mm -hmm. nod, nod yeah. to them, move on. Uh. Okay. Uh. Who has a passive perception above fifteen? Uh, I do, I believe. Yeah, you do? Maybe. Okay. So, they tail you for maybe an hour. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and they're still, still tailing us, or like after the hour, they just kind of... Um, if, if, you, if you let them tail you for the full hour, then they just... they, they leave eventually. But yeah, they... Well, sorry, yeah. Well, sorry, he doesn't mention it okay. to anybody. Okay. Yeah, after after an hour then they just sort of they leave you and disappear into the woods. Uh and that is the end of that. Uh so yeah, uh expend another provision. Uh I make me another constitution saving throw. Um There we go. Okay. Uh I need to check what uh, exhaustion does? Oh. Wait, it's like in the. I, I have it. Uh, right. Okay, so you gain another level of exhaustion, uh, which you'll now be at two. So your speed will be halved today <laughs> if you don't do something. Uh, but yeah, you feel you feel real shitty. Yeah, all I'm saying, like, does she look real shitty? Yeah. yeah. Uh, give me. Uh. 
question. Would Arya admit to feeling shitty? Yeah, like, yeah, has she not. said anything? Are, are you, are you, like, hiding this? I mean, I'm not really hiding it so much as I'm just not, like, telling the others. Yeah, okay, so, so yeah. just, just make, make it a medicine check, then. Because I'm good at those. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she, <laughs> like, Arya looks like she, uh, um, Every, like it, it's starting to look like everything she does, she seems to do with like a, like a, a, an increased amount of effort. Like she looks, um, uh, like if you, if you've ever seen somebody move the day after they've been to the gym, it's basically no. that. Yeah. <laughs> like everything is an effort. I guess I guess one does. She's gonna like say to her and be like, "Are you feeling quite all right, that Aya? Look, you, uh, oh, you like, look no. a bit shaky." <laughs> Oh, no, Jesus. I'm not feeling great. But I'm sure it's just from all the traveling, I'll be fine. Uh, I look sort of doubt doubtedly at her, but before before bed, I suppose, like like during the evening after camp, uh, I will cast I might as well try and cast Greater Restoration. Oh Greater shit. Restoration. Oh okay, so that you're doing that so, at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you're on horseback, so actually, actually this doesn't slow this doesn't slow your travel, so you still get the six hexes. Nice. So I was going to say, if it's a big uh, like... Actually, you could, you could uh, if you want to, you could push it and get to uh, Silverbrook and just tire the horses. I mean, yeah, we probably should do that. Yeah. yeah, there's not really much point in us waiting. Yeah, it'll be the middle of the night by the time you get there, but... Uh, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. So we can just rest up there, and it's not like the horses are going to have to keep moving. Yeah. I'll be yeah. able to have a nice long rest. Okay, so you, you push it to Silverbrook then. Yeah. Uh... Um... Silverbrook, there it is. Uh... Uh, everything, yeah. everything as Heart's it should be. There. <laughs> yep. The heart will always be the there. The heart is always there. The heart it will must always live. go on. The heart must live. Yeah. I just love how it's so shittily drawn. <laughs> I know. Well, hey, it's so good though. Great heart. How dare you? We need we need a little shrine with a raven feather somewhere. Oh yeah. Yeah. Someone draw yeah. a shrine with a raven feather. Kind of detail is going to be way better than a heart. Two letters. <laughs> Wait, I gotta do this. Yeah, come, come on then. Come on, Rika. Right. Oh, my color's really hard to see. No, no, you can no, you can change right. the it's color of your bad. pen. Yeah. That's okay. It's not too bad. Oh. I guess that works. I like that it's got a little roof. I was just imagining yeah. sort of like a little cairn just made out of stacked yeah. stones, but yeah. sure. Just like, just draw, draw some little squares. Uh... <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> it's more like a dove's feather, like it's white. Oh yeah, it should be black, hold on. Like... Yeah, it should be <laughs> anyway. Fucking art <laughs> going on here. <laughs> so, uh, you, you arrive back in, in Silverbrook, and presumably you go to the tavern. Uh, yes. Okay. Oh, my. Uh, yeah, you 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 get to the tavern. Uh, it's it's very late, but like sort of, it, it's there's almost no patrons left in the tavern, and um, the the woman from the the bar is sort of there just cleaning stuff, and she's like, "Oh, welcome back." Um, I presume you're looking for rooms. Uh, rooms would be great. Uh, so yeah, you guys can rent rooms for the evening. Uh, consume a ration, because it's like too late to get food now. It's basically midnight. Um, uh, but yes, yeah, so if you guys want to spend... Uh, I can't remember what it was to stay here. I think it's like... I think it was like three silver a person, something like that. I can't remember. Uh. 
I don't think so. Everyone will see me. But I, I think we end up with like two golds <laughs> for great, uh, like, a <laughs> shared <great> room. <laughs> I believe we paid like two golds for everyone combined. Uh, yeah, but it depends whether you want um, shared rooms or separate rooms. Because if it's separate, it's more. You get I, feel like, I feel like we've been getting shared rooms unless somebody yeah. has been like, nah. Yeah. Nah, man. I but, don't know. Well, we've been having shared rooms, I'm sure. Uh, you didn't the last time you stayed here, that was the thing. Oh. Uh, uh, that's fair. I eh. would explain it to gold because it's slightly more than three silver a, a person. I mean, we've been all cozy. We can do shared rooms. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, we're a team. We can share a room. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Okay. You guys. You guys get a shared room. So, uh, yeah, it's still five of you. So it's two. Yeah, two gold. Okay. I'll, I'll pay for the rooms. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, you guys go to sleep. Uh, Vandal, you're gonna cast Greater Restoration on Aya. Yes. Uh, Aya, I presume you just let him. Yeah. I mean. <clears throat> cast a spell on okay, you. what does Greater Restoration get rid of? Um, well, I know it gets rid of Exhaustion. Okay. Um, I know that for a fact. So it gets rid of... It gets rid of one level of Exhaustion. Uh, any any charm... Uh, one effect that charms or petrified, curse... No, nothing really that's relevant, I don't think. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it, yeah. Remo it removes your levels of Exhaustion. Uh, uh, it removes I... one level of Exhaustion. Oh, yeah, okay, it removes one level of exhaustion. I still need to make me a constitution saving throw. Right. I can't believe you're gonna die to exhaustion. Oh, okay. No. So, g immediately regain that level of exhaustion. <laughs> Holy shit. Fuck my life. Hey, uh, somebody should tell me about uh, Arya. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm, I didn't go to Arya privately. That's true. I would have said it, yeah. like, just outright. Arya, are you looking okay? And I just went, no. That was not a private conversation. Yeah. Do you want to offer your help to Aya? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I don't know if it's like what's going on, right? Well, Vondal knows that she feels sick, and that's about it. Okay. I mean, sick is a good guess to attempt to to do the same thing I did. Uh. Yep, to me, in my head, sick equals disease of some sort, so yeah. Yeah, you, you can try <laughs> it's it. Gonna, we'll fucking try it. Okay. I mean, the worst that's gonna happen is it's not gonna do anything, so... Yeah. Okay, so, you w about the same time that Vondal does the... the uh, remove one level of fatigue, so actually go back to one level of exhaustion. Um, actually, which will immediately be reduced to zero, because you're about to take a long rest. Um, yep. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, Kalaris does the does the sort of like laying a hand on your on your shoulder, like holding onto your arm. Uh, you feel like the familiar rush of energy from when she does like the lay on hands. Um, and yeah, you feel better. You are no longer diseased. Well, that's good. Thank maybe, maybe maybe tell us next time when you're not feeling well. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we, we wouldn't want anything to happen to you. You guys like my shrine? It's my yeah, shrine. It's very nice. nice. <laughs> we so long to fucking drop them. I know, it's like you should be like, you're so long. so long just removing them all. Okay. If I remember correctly, that was my first so attempt right. at the heart. So. You rest for the rest of the evening. Uh, and you wake up uh, late the next day. What do you do? I guess you want to try and find Simone. Uh, you can do that. Uh, seeing as how basically everybody here knows you these days, yep. uh, it is fairly easy for you to locate Simone. Uh, she is uh, up in Silverbrook Hall in the morning, uh, and as you 
uh, as you arrive at the hall, uh, you see a uh, a number of familiar individuals uh, sitting uh, basically on the uh, the the. You remember the, the the long wooden benches that that were that were brought out when you had the trial all that time ago. Uh, one one of the long wooden benches has been pulled away from the wall and is basically uh, placed in front of the uh, the carved wooden throne where uh, Lord Silverbrook sits. Um, Lethari, I think this is the first time you've ever been in Silverbrook Hall. Yeah. Okay. The first time I went is I. Got to Silverbrook. I just went straight to the. Yes. Uh, so, uh, I guess just by just by virtue of being with these guys, they let you into the to the hall. Um, but it, essentially, uh, the chamber that you enter into is a um, uh, imagine sort of like a like a, a Viking longhouse, except uh, directly uh, like directly as you come through the door, there is a uh, an ancient looking. Uh, well that is basically exists in the center of this hall, uh, and then there is a lo- there is a long hall and a raised dais uh, where there is a throne and three uh, throne and two other chairs. Um, currently, at this time, only the chair in the center is occupied by a uh, quite an quite an old looking elf, uh, probably still younger than you. Um, uh, he is he is sitting up uh, and on the the throne and he, he's wearing sort of a um, uh, a very plain but very sort of like official looking uh, lordly attire. Um, you could probably actually give me a history check to see if you know who this guy is because he's kind of famous. He's kind of big deal. Yeah. Okay. So you have heard of this guy before. Uh, let me find his thing. Look, I want to make it look nice. Just do the and then drag it over. Stop just... trying to delete half the square. Whatever you have to do, one line of the panel. Wrong. Wrong. Um. <laughs> it's because when you dragged it over later, you'd put the other, you'd put the other things on afterwards. It's meant they were on top. If you do the feather now and drag it over, then the feather will be on top. Uh, so yeah, Lothari, you you know who uh, this is. Um, basically, this is a uh, he, he. This is Lord Silverbrook. Uh, so the the Silverbrooks are a fairly influential Elven family, um, and probably about the same time that you were in the military, this guy was a very up and coming uh, wild hunt captain. Uh, and he was uh, he was fairly famous amongst the military for um, uh, being very creative with uh, the use of magic and namely uh, uh, namely the schools of like uh, illusion and abjuration uh, to essentially turn. Uh, fights that should have been incredibly against the wild hunt into uh, victories that nobody thought was uh, were possible with the numbers that he had available. Um, so yeah, he he's he is quite a tactician and uh, also a very well respected member of the noble classes. Uh, and yeah, he he is engaged in. Conversation with uh, the the dark hell dark haired um, wood elf that you uh, were introduced to as uh, Captain Anariel Simone, uh, as well as a blonde haired uh, high elf uh, who wears uh, wild hunt garb. Uh, uh, he he ha- he is he has a fairly low ranking rank insignia. Um, he is quite clearly one of, uh... <laughs> if you guys are quite done drawing, um, yeah, he, he's got a, he's got a rank insignia. He's quite clearly one of, um, Simone's, uh, juniors. Um, but he, he seems to be giving some sort of report to, uh, 
Lord Silverbrook, and Simone is giving him, uh, like, Simone seems to be, like, paying a lot of attention to him as he's talking. Um, and as you enter, they, uh, they finish their conversation, uh, turn to face you, and, uh, the blonde-haired high elf seems to recognize the rest of the group and sort of, uh, waves quite happily to them. Uh, for the rest of you, uh, you get to the hall and, uh, Ilaran appears to be giving a, uh, uh, some sort of report to Simone and Lord Silverbrook as you enter. Uh, and as you enter, it's sort of like um, uh, Eloran waves at you and uh, Lord Silverbrook sort of greets you in, a, in his fairly formal fashion. What do you guys do? Uh, I guess one dollar probably just. I guess one dollar speak up and go. We're not uh, interrupting anything too important, are we? Sorry, Lethari. What did you say you were doing? I'm just kind of looking around at everything and just kind okay. of you know, taking it all in. Okay. Um. Uh. No. It's, uh. Lord Silverbrook sort of stand, stands up and says, "Um. No, I believe we were quite finished. Um. Is this uh?" Uh, is this something for, for my attention, or is this uh, merely a, uh, an informal visit? Uh, an informal visit. Uh, we we've, we've, uh, simply went to wish to speak to Simone briefly. Very well, oh. then uh, I will take my leave. I have uh, other business that I must attend to. Very well. He uh, nods to you and then sort of departs out, of the, out to the where you guys know the the sort of the side chambers are. Uh, yeah, and you are essentially left with Simone and Elrond. Yeah, okay. My OTP is back in town, boys. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the pair of us back in town. Anyway. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they're like totally in love. Great. <laughs> no, yeah, I, no, I, I'm pretty sure I've read the fan fiction. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> wow. Oh, but, um, yeah, I guess, I guess one day I will, like, walk up to Simone, because this isn't, this probably shouldn't be loud conversation, okay. and, um, basically tells the story. So you, you're going to tell, tell them the whole story there, there and now? Um, well, actually, that's possibly not the best idea. Um... I'm actually not sure why we went to her in the first place. Und she because she's the only person who speaks under common. Oh, yeah, she probably books. speaks under common, that's why. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Or at least she um, does. Uh, yeah, you assume from what she told you about her history that she does. Yeah. Because um, you know she was a deep probably, stalker. Yeah, this is probably something that should be kept. Fairly down low, so I guess one will say, um, we need, we would like to ask you about uh, something we found in our travels, but it's potentially not for all ears. She sort of nods and sort of says, um, I suppose we could, I'm sure Lord Silver wouldn't use, mind us using one of the side chambers if that's secluded enough for you. Um, it probably should, should be fine. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, we'll go into a side chamber. Okay. And we'll tell the story. Okay. Uh, so, b before that happens, as as you sort of, like, get to the door, uh, like, Simone sort of steps inside, and Elrond's just sort of, he's not really, he's sort of, like, uh, he, he sees... Uh, Lethari, and it's sort of like th there's an exchange that is sort of like should I leave? <laughs> I just kind of give him like a uh, like you know like a warm smile that doesn't like communicate an, an answer but that's <laughs> definitely what I'm doing. You just, you just sort of smile at him and he's 
he isn't really sure. He turns to Vondal. Vondal usually seems to be the decision maker on this. Uh, um... I mean, I don't see why we would have to. Yeah, I guess you'd, I should probably say I don't see why you would have to leave, but yeah, basically you'd just say um, you're not necessarily obligated to to leave. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow! If you want to listen to what if you want to listen to what we have to say, then you can. Okay. He's leaving it open in case he doesn't want to listen in. He he turns to Simone because nobody will give him a straight fucking answer, and Simone says, "Don't you have things to do?" And he's like, "Well, I guess I'm gonna do that then." <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good. Oh. We're great at this, guys. Yeah. I can't believe it. It's like, I guess I'll see you guys later. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm back, by the way. Hi. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey. Hi, Give him a wave. Yeah. I still love you, my son. <laughs> you know, <it's> <laughs> Do you say that in character? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. uh, you really need to calm down around these two. Yeah, he, he just he just sort of... As, as, he's, as he's leaving, he's sort of just like... Um, uh, Oh, wait, hmm. Okay, I, I, I guess there is a, there is a hand gesture ex exchanged between, uh, Simone and Illaram. Oh, do they have a secret handshake now? What? Oh, shit. Well, <laughs> you can, you can try and make an insight check to see if you can deduce what he means by the context. No! Oh, yay! Sorry. Oh. Are you, is it just you guys that are inside? No, it I'm, I'm doing ah. I was struggling. Okay. Yes, eight! Um, yeah, might as well. Nope. Oh, oh that's... Uh, well, I don't expect too much. Yeah. yeah. That looks like a oh. It's good enough! There you go! <laughs> so, God there... Uh, Thari von Dahl Grimm, there's, there's a gesture that is, you sort of deduced to, to mean, like, uh, af after this, where shall I find you? And it's just sort of like, here, or back, wherever, he, he, like, he indicates behind him, and it's just like, wherever that means. Uh, at which point, Simone just sort of, like, makes a small, a shallow shrug and just sort of goes, like, points down, which you assume you mean, like, here? Mm. <laughs> well, good enough. Sure, there you go. Will that do? So th there you go. Um, Will that do or is that shit? No, it's fine. I just <laughs> okay. Look, it's so salty! <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> I can move it. So. Can you make it smaller? Probably. Oh. El Elran leaves and you guys enter the room with some money. And you, um, you proceed to explain to her your story. Yeah, like yeah. A, a short sign up. Okay. Uh, um, presumably, yeah, you tell, you tell her about the letter, Grim, and presumably give her the letter. Uh, yep. I'll I'll start with the letter and then I'll just put like the rest of the books on like the, the side. Okay. Um I'd like everybody to make me another round of insight checks. Oh, what? Why? We just robbed the royal. <laughs> oh, that would be nice. terrible. Nice. No, she's just gonna be like, the fuck? Uh, okay, so, uh, Lothari von Dahl Aya. Uh, Simone con seems concerned when, uh, like, when, when you start talking about, like, passageways to the Underdark and going into Duragar fortresses. Uh, when you hand her the letter and she begins to read the letter, um, it's very hard to tell because she's quite pale anyway, but she gets paler when she starts to read the letter. 
Wait, she turned into Paymore? Ah ha 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 Stop stealing my job! <laughs> <laughs> the colour drains slowly from her face. Oh, no. Fucking pedants. Uh, what's wrong, Simone? She sort of looks up from the letter and says, um... I need to... I, I need you to tell me as many details that you know about this. A anything that you, you picked up while you were in there? Any, any information, any books? Even... Even anything that you might have managed to get your hands on. Well, I, I kind of sweep the hammer in. I just sweep the entire desk into the bag. So, uh, and I assume I haven't gotten rid of all the the junk yet because I didn't want to just throw it. At, well, uh, no, you you just kept most of it in there. Yeah. So I, I'll just like empty everything that belonged to that desk out of the bag. Okay. And well, and like on the shelves. Okay. With, with the exception of the, uh, with the elven book. Oh, well, I guess I might as well just put like lay it out there because she knows about it anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She she definitely seems more interested in the things that are written in Undercommon uh, rather than the actual book. Um. Uh. But yeah, she she goes through it, and uh, do you take out the you take out the silver pen that was with it? Uh, I, everything that was on the desk, the okay. the ink pile, the stamps. She the shows plants. a particular interest in the silver pen, uh, which she sort of uh, she takes and she like she very deliberately sort of like puts it to one side, sort of like I'm going to come back to that later. Um. Uh, and yeah, basically she goes through it, and uh, yeah, she 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 offers to read the letter to you in, or translate the letter into common for you guys. Uh -huh. That would be much uh, appreciated. Yeah, uh, basically she says um, uh, the letter reads as follows: uh, Vrode, the first shipment has been received and meets expectation. Your payment is inclu is enclosed in gemstones as requested. Uh, at the behest of the High Priestess herself, you are to produce arms of the same quality for 4,000 more troops. A sanctioned member of her order will join you within the month to acquire more materials. These must be completed before our next surface expedition, else you will hear of the High Priestess's displeasure. Praise to Lolf, Matron Bainray. Hmm. Maybe Lord Silverbrook should get involved. <laughs> After all... Do you say that out loud? Um... Well, I, I just said... Sorry, say that again, because you cut out. Huh. Say that again? Well, oh, uh, I said, dying. maybe, maybe we should shouldn't have sent Lord Silverbrook away anyway. Okay. Uh, like... she, she says, um, perhaps actually his absence is for the best. Um... I I am not sure what of this I can actually tell you. Classified information then, I assume. Very much so. Then you need not tell us at all. If it is not... No. If it is not your position to tell us, then don't. She she sort of nods and says, mm, "Perhaps that is, perhaps that is, the most sensible." Well, like, if there's anything you need help with, you know you can ask. And uh, well, she she smiles and says, "Thank you, but, uh, it is." It is more a case of the fact that I will have to get into contact with people that I have not 
spoken to in quite some time oh, wait, and for me. good reason. <laughs> oh. That's an understandable thing to be concerned about. Yeah. I, I assume these are the people that had something to do with our, uh, well, court session. <laughs> or at least the, the interference of. Uh, she, she's sort of, uh, she shrugs and says, um, to a certain degree, the, I suppose it is okay to tell you this. You know, uh, you know that I used to have a, and that, like, at, at this point she, she looks at Lothari and sort of, she fixes you with a, a look, Lothari, as she says this. Um, and she sort of says, you know I used to have a alter ego, a different identity, so to speak. Oh. You guys do know this, with the exception of yes. Lothari. Yeah. 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 Lothari is not, like, not, not, yeah. not, like, budging an inch. Okay. Well, I, I should, like, do I notice her looking at, uh... Lathari. Uh, yeah, it's it's obvious. <laughs> well, I guess I maybe it's like to put her at ease a bit. Like, well, she. Uh, I'll just tell her like she's trustworthy. She has ex ex storm guard. <laughs> like, hopefully that helps. Okay. Or maybe make me a persuasion check. Oh boy! I I just assume like the storm guard have a. Yeah, you you're assuming weight to a to a title. Yeah. Was... Yeah. Uh persuasion. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> oh Jesus. You Hello? you don't you don't serve to assuage her, her discomfort in any way. What what um what was the what's the how much higher was Centurion higher than ca than Captain in the military rank? Oh, uh, a, a, of equivalent ranking, uh, yes, yes, because uh, she, yeah, she she is in command of a like a uh, a unit of of things, whereas you would have been in command of a couple of units. Okay. So yeah, I think I'll I'll kind of I'll kind of take out my rank insignia from around my neck so it's hanging out uh, visibly and kind of just <laughs> say, perhaps Jeez. it would be for the best of er of everybody if we knew the whole picture. Okay. I just realized that my thoughts like, oh. like, oh shit, I just told a, a higher ranking officer like, restricted information. <laughs> Oh. Well, somebody got a natural 20, so, like, without even, like, budging an inch from, uh, from inside her uniform, uh, Simone basically pulls a, uh, like a, uh, a, like a thin, uh, like, uh, what are they called? Um... Anyway, uh, it's it's a a very a very thin flat bladed knife um, that basically has a uh, uh, like a a small circle on the hilt uh, with an insignia that I don't think any of you, with save perhaps Lothari, have seen before. Uh, actually, no, yeah, no, definitely none of you have seen before. Um, so yeah, she she pulls out this this uh this thin knife with a like a little circle on the handle, and holds it like up in front of you, like sort of almost like challenging the rank insignia. Um, give me a history check with advantage. Okay. Uh yeah, she holds it up to you and she says, uh. That's as my, as may be, but do you have any idea what this is? Um, and you do. 
Uh, it is the insignia of the Deep Stalkers, which is uh, basically the the elven equivalent of like the CIA. <laughs> but if Holy nobody knew. Shit. Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, you you know what that is. I'm just gonna assume you're a deep stalker then. Just kind of not Was. Getting, just not like flinching at all. Yeah, yeah. She she very poignantly says was. Um, but yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess if I guess if you don't flinch, she carries on talking, but it's just sort of like she's just sort of she watches you, uh, like it not like less like she doesn't trust you now, but more like she's just she wants to see how you react to what she tells you. Um. Uh, but basically, she says, um. Uh. Yes, uh, you were aware that I had an alter ego. Um, that was my my alias when I was uh, embedded amongst the uh, the the Drow household when I was younger. The woman who wrote this letter, Matron Bainray, she was essentially my sponsor whilst I was down there. Consider her to be sort of like an adoptive mother to promising drow children without a household. Um, I only ever met her once. She didn't exactly take care of me herself, but the one time I did meet her, um, she was a, a force to be reckoned with. Um, she is in command of one of the most powerful drow households in the Underdark. Um, if she, if what you tell me is true, and this, this metal is capable of making powerful magical weapons, and she wants 4,000 troops outfitted with this, that is incredibly concerning. From what you've told me, it sounds like you've set them back, at the very least, and getting the secrets back is... Well, that's quite possibly the best thing you could have done. And this... Mm, this is where it becomes difficult. And she 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 muses for a moment before turning to to Claris, and she sort she she sort of looks at you, Claris, and she says, "Can I have a word with you in private?" Sure. Mm. Right. I guess if she goes somewhere, I follow her. Uh, well, it's it's more like she wants everybody else to leave. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fuck. <laughs> Bye, guys. Okay. Yeah, in that case, I'll sort of nod. Okay. And usher everybody else out. Yeah. I'll leave. Okay. I think I would put uh put like uh at least the the important like the smithing book back into the bag. Just to make be sure nothing happens. Oh, you're going you're gonna to put that... Uh, okay, in, in that case, she kind of... Uh, as you go to reach for it, like, Simone puts a hand on it and just says, would you mind leaving that for a moment? Um, sure. And I'll just, uh, like, I, I, won't, I won't fight her on it. Okay. Uh, so, presumably, the rest of you guys leave? Yeah. Okay. Uh, then, Kalaris, would you come with me, please? Uh-huh. Okay. So everybody files out of the room. Uh, 
Smarty like waits for a moment uh, before turning to you. Um, uh, and she she sort of says, first things first, can I ask you to do me a favor? Sure. What is it? I am about to do something that could potentially be dangerous. If anything looks like it's remotely going wrong, will you stop it? Sure, I'll, I'll do my best. Okay. So, uh, Sony grabs a blank piece of paper from the desk, lays it out in, in front of her, puts the silver pen that she put to one side on on top of it uh before she she says two words in uh a language that you don't recognize that out of game is under common mm -hmm. uh and you watch as the pen itself springs to life scrawls something in a uh an elaborate hand on the piece of paper uh before it it uh, it uh, very very aggressively punctuates the end of the the last few words and flies towards Simone. Uh Can you make me a dexterity saving throw, please? Oh God! Yeah, I was just gonna say, can I try to jump in front of that? Oh no, my dexterity saves are not great. Oh my fucking God! Okay, so you can't <laughs> you you with an expecting this with a trained reaction catch the pen like without before it even makes it to Simone and she's like oh okay um thank you for that no. uh that was not what i was expecting to happen but i was just going to ask that <laughs> okay uh well <laughs> that she says pointing at the the piece of paper in front of her was partly what i was expecting um well, that I guess that answers that question. What is that? Um, <laughs> and what were you expecting, I guess? Uh, simply put, this pen is part of a set. Um, House Bainray is very fond of its magical gadgets. Um... This one happens to be a uh, sort of a, a, a method of sending short messages. Um, if you possess one of these pens and a message is left for you on a similar pen, then uh, you can send and receive messages between people, provided they're 25 words or less. Um, I used to, to have one when I was working for the house, and... Um, uh, I left it behind when I left. Um, suffice it to say, I was curious to see if the matron had any any last words for me. And um, well, I'm not disappointed. I'm assuming it's written in under common, so I it's can't written in under common. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I kind of look at her expectantly, like. Do I get to know what it says? But I don't ask her out loud. Okay. She 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 catches your look and sort of in in a lower voice it like she lowers her voice and says, um uh to put it in more polite common terms, it says die surface whore die. Oh. Pleasant. She sounds like a lovely person. Full sarcasm. <laughs> With that, un un uh, in in the the same low tone, she says, "Well, I did murder her daughter." All right, wasn't expecting that, but you know, <laughs> fair. Secrets aside, um, I was hoping to consult you on something, knowing that you tend to have stronger opinions on these things. <laughs> if 
if I go to my contacts and the people who I guess I, I worked for, if you can call it that, when I was younger, the Deep Stalkers, they will want to take all of this information. And that includes, and she puts her hand on the book, what this contains in terms of weapons. Hmm. I am uncomfortable knowing that these weapons would be in the hands of an organization that is often questionable in its intentions. I mean, I... I am not one to, to judge the efforts that they make, but... They occasionally do things in the interests of protecting the realm, which sometimes I feel like the realm comes out of it worse. I feel like that's something that happens more often than we'd like. So you want to avoid giving them that book in particular? In a manner of speaking. My question to you is... If it were to go... missing, or for it to be omitted from from my reports would you be willing to take it? Of course I wouldn't want it to get into the wrong hands any more than you do and if me taking it is what is necessary then I'll do that You see sort of like a look of relief flow over Simone and she's sort of like I... I was hoping that you would agree. Very well then. Um, I guess that settles it. Is there anything else I should know since I'm taking it? Or just keep it with me as much as I can, or as, you know, for as long as I can? As long as it disappears, uh, it will not matter. I... Okay don't really care where it goes, I trust your judgment. Okay. Um, but no. Um, I think with with all that you've done, slaying the Forge Master, destroying his tools, you have done what the Deep Stalkers have been trying to do for, well, a very long time, and that is set back House Bainray's efforts. Uh, I suppose I should thank you, but it doesn't really feel like the time to do so. It's all right. We did what we did because it we didn't have many other options, and it felt right. <laughs> we don't do things looking for thanks. Simone smiles and says, uh, "No." I th I think after after traveling with you for all this time that um, that is certainly one thing that I have learned. <laughs> right. Well, I should probably call back in the rest of your companions and and let them know a few things. Uh, what do you want to do with this pen, by the way? Which I definitely have not let go of since it yeah. <laughs> tried to fly at her. Um. Well, functionally, it is it is useless to to pretty much everyone. It's um, it's magic can only be be wielded by uh, a certain number of people, and unless you fancy sending Matron Bainray a, a message, I I don't see see much <laughs> use in in keeping it. Um, it. 
will prove difficult to destroy, but I suppose if I hand it in with the rest of these things, it will be destroyed. Then I will leave it to you to take care of, and I'll hand it back to her. <laughs> she uh, she goes to take it and then says, ah, maybe I shouldn't. Oh, right. <laughs> Can I just like put it with the rest of the yeah, stuff? Yeah, you you put it on, yeah. on the table, and she's like, "Yeah, well, I'll I'll find a way to deal with that." Uh, right, and we all go back. All right. Hello. Oh. Oh. Hello. We are back. Hello. 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 Uh, you are very concerningly long in that room. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Why are you so far away? It's not. It's not. <laughs> Shut up. How do you know? It might be fine. Shut up. That's okay. So, um... Yeah, so... Bas basically, um... A... A small... A short time passes, um... Before some like the door opens again, and Simone says, uh, "You can come back now." Walk back in. Clara's dead. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm dead. I'm on the floor, dead. <laughs> totally. I mean, we did talk about that possibility being a real thing. Wow. <sighs> Clara's is Clarus is just sitting in the chair where you left her. <laughs> Come, you guys need to calm the fuck down. Just because someone's yeah. being taken to side to be talked to privately doesn't mean they're dying. Um, is the book still on the table? Uh, the book is, yeah, the book is exactly where it was left. Okay. Uh, give me a perception check, Lothari. Because it does. Okay, uh, the only thing that is different in the room is that uh, in the middle of the desk now is a piece of paper with something written on it in the same, in, like in the uh, the hand of the that you now know is under common. Hmm. I guess I can just like look at Kalaris. Yeah, I guess. Well, I guess you I'll observe say, Kalaris. <laughs> just say, just, uh, sitting here. Is that something further to discuss then? Uh no, I I don't believe so. Um I will need to to contact my I still have a, a few people that I know from my time as a deep stalker that um I can get in contact with and and relay this information to. Um I have had a brief discussion with Kalaris, and we have decided that this, and she picks up the uh, the manual slash diary, uh, should probably disappear. Disappear as in be destroyed, or disappear as in be hidden? Disappear as in not be submitted with the rest of this material. Oh yeah, that was well. Yeah. That that was already uh, taken into consideration. But it definitely isn't an official, or officially, it was. Uh, it has gone missing, as I think. Uh, yes, I think. What it, will happen? It's questioned about. It see it is unlikely, but if you are ever questioned about what happened here, then this manuscript does not exist. Hmm. What you do with it beyond this room is entirely up to you, but as far as the rest of the world is concerned, it does not exist. Okay. Vandal, Vandal, just, Vandal just nods. I give a very pointed look to Vandal, knowing how he feels about doing this sort of stuff sometimes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, be on the same page with us here, buddy. I mean, yeah, Vandal's like, yeah, that's fair enough. When someone who specializes in intelligence and what should and should not be known tells you that something should not be known of, you listen. Should not be known of. Yeah. 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 When someone tells you that, you listen. Remember, he doesn't know the the the, the context of why it should disappear. So that is also true. 
As far as he concerned, he's obeying the law, as is his lawful alignment. Exactly. <laughs> that, cool. that, that is fair. Plus, he kind of didn't want it going somewhere he didn't think it could be trusted anyway. Like, he, did, he doesn't really want it travelling with us. He doesn't really want it somewhere in someone else's hands who he can't fully trust. Or, alternatively, he wants it gone completely. <laughs> okay. So... I mean, I'll... That, that this is really conform conforming with what he thinks should be done with this book. Yeah, good, good. Fine. Yeah. It's not that bad. It's yeah. fine. He, he just that is not that bad. Sorry, can we talk about the that no. bad? Anyway, yeah. no, we can't. If, no. Nope. If that's the, the discussion, I will pick up the book and kind of just look at Simone and say, the less you know about what happens to it, probably the better. So, just tucks it away for now. Okay. Yeah. I'll deal with it outside of this so she doesn't have yeah. to know more than she needs to about its yeah. whereabouts. Uh, yeah, she she nods and says, um, that is probably the best idea, then if I do not know, then I cannot tell even under, well, yeah. I'll leave that to the imagination. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't yeah. come to that. Even under oath. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've already had one wow. tri uh, court trial in this game, so. <laughs> Time for another one, guys. I mean, please no. You you, gu you guys have in the past been subjected to a very, very effective questioning technique. Mm. Zone of truth. Zone of truth. Oh yeah. Yep. I don't even remember. Let me hear you say true. True. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, Simone takes the rest of the stuff and says. Uh, I will do the best, do my best to communicate to my contacts what this is about, and hopefully somebody will come along and and pick this up and and note this down somewhere. Um, before I forget, the fellow you met out in the swamp, you tell me he is he too is writing a report. He does not know about the book, correct? Um, I don't think we told him what happened to it. I've... I Wait, believe he was still I... unconscious actually when you set when you talked about it, because yeah. you told Zuda while he was still unconscious. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. Right. He was unconscious when we told the story. Cool. Uh, oh, yeah, we only so, yeah, told was, him about the underways, or like the yeah. the yes. You did not tell him like about it. the book. So no, yeah. we did not tell him about the book. That's convenient. So, yeah. In that case, uh, Simone seems not quite happy, but relieved that this is all dealt with. Um, and yeah, she basically says, uh, well, that expedition turned out to be quite a lot more than you were expecting. Yeah, well, that's one way time. of putting it. Not the first time no. we've gone on what we thought was a simple mission and gone in a bit deeper than we expected. True. She smiles and says, I have yet to believe anything about any of you has ever been simple. It, it was once. <laughs> Not since these guys showed up. <laughs> We're wrecking from those perfectly planned at life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfectly planned that life he's already lived and is quite happy with. But what would you do without us, Vondal? Well, I'd, uh. Well, that'd certainly be a lot more boring, I'd assume. I'd be a content old man. Somehow I don't see content yeah. or an old man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very much not content, and I'm not quite old yet. Not yet. Getting there. A couple more decades. <laughs> yeah, so S Simone quite happily banters with the the rest of you for a for a short time. Yeah. I really want to know what that thing was. 
Well, well, you'd have to ask. Oh. Question is, were like all the books important, or did we get anything bad? No. Oh, so you're you're like at, at the books that you gave Simone. Oh, uh, I I didn't hear what you said. The the books that you are you, you're asking if the books that you gave Simone were all important. My internet time real bad. Oh rip. I think I think that's what he was asking though. Yes. Yeah. Well yeah. from what I understood. Um, yeah, so uh not not all of them are critically important, no. Um a lot of them are like books on smithing and on history, but together they make up a library collection that explains how he ended up learning about this stuff in the first place. So, if these books are no longer easily accessible, somebody has to rebuild this collection to be able to get to the same point. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like somebody sort of like rounds rounds off that sort of dialogue thing with, um, I, I think unknowingly, you've all dealt a a significant setback to one of the most powerful drow houses in the Underdark, and for that, the world will not thank you, because they will never know, but... <laughs> Suffice it to say, you've done a great deal for the safety of the realm without even fully understanding. Well, we didn't go completely unrewarded. Like, looks at from Doll's hammer. <laughs> Simone raises an eyebrow. Vinny? Vinny Grim? Look, uh, just look, we, we found some, some nice gear, but it's, uh, it's it's not really of use to to anyone, really. Just some ancient artifacts. Probably gonna sell them off to a museum. Yeah. Wow. So, well, uh, well, the first age or uh, armor. I think you. I think you uh, mispronounced "donate" there. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> I can't believe to the Dwarven Kingdom. S Simone lean, leans leans across the desk with an extended hand, like you know, I really should confiscate that for evidence. Yeah. I I feel like it's not going to fit. Yeah back anyway, don't worry. <laughs> I could make room. <laughs> for, a full set of, for a full set of ceremonial armor. Look, now that trust me, I have nothing on me. I hold the bag of holding upside down thinking of nothing. Just having nothing fall out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that yeah that works. Okay. So if you turn it inside out it, it fucks up. But... Oh yeah, it, I think <laughs> Yeah, if you turn if you turn it inside out, everything comes out. Oh, oh. Yeah, don't, don't oh, no. do that. yeah, that would be burning rocks and all. Yeah. Oh yeah. I <laughs> forgot we had really, this. really bad. You would fill the room with crap. Yeah. Oh, God's sake. Don't turn your bags of holding inside out, children. <laughs> Never turn your bag of holding inside out. Don't share needles and don't turn your bags of holding inside out. <laughs> God. The more you know. The more you know, the more you don't get sick. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, so, uh, with that, the sort of the conversation reaches a lull. What do you guys want to do? I want to ask what the fuck that thing is, but I want to get Clarus alone first. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> everyone, oh wants to to, everyone wants to talk to Clarus alone. Yeah. I'm <laughs> so popular today, what's happening? <laughs> Nobody wants to talk to me alone. I, I would find we're just talking about it in public, but you know. I guess, well, I guess we should at the very least uh, vacate the hall. Yeah. Before uh, we leave, uh, Lothari kind of turns to um, Captain Mario and says, um, I'm so sorry for giving you a, a hard time, my dear, but you know, I feel like it would be best to... Oh my god. It was in everybody's best interest at the time. She sort of slowly nods and says, 
I will say that having having people who also understand how important this situation is is comforting to me at least um I will say that if you all knew the full circumstances, then well, let's just say it's better off if you don't know the full circumstances. Oh. That must be bad. Well, um, I would appreciate it if you kept my name out of your report as well. Does he even know your name? Or, yeah, uh, yeah you introduced name. yourself at the table. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. She. She nods and smiles and says, "I will be as vague as I possibly can." It's nice to be able to walk around without. Anybody knowing that I my past? She smiles and like it, it's a, almost an unnervingly wide smile when she hears you say that, and she says, uh, "I will second that thought any day." <laughs> I kind of oh, kind of tuck the rank insignia back underneath my robe and kind of yeah. pull it up. Yeah, she put she puts the flat bladed knife back in the 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 inside pocket. I'm not just, I'm not just gonna sign like ignorance is bliss. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I kind of hold my hand out for a handshake. Yeah, she she'll shake your hand. Take care of yourself, Captain. Uh, oh, what was your rank again? Centurion. Centurion. And she, yeah, she, she says, and you, Centurion. <laughs> kind of bow my head a little bit and just kind of turn back to the rest of the group. Okay. You and your military rank it's so extra. <laughs> it really is pretty extra. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't have. I have a rank, but I don't have much to show for. <laughs> you, have <a> rank, <laughs> only, you have a rank, and it's max rank, but it's also the only rank. <laughs> yeah, what is it again, really? Oh <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, to remember your rank. Do you remember your overly oh. complicated rank? Oh, what did we? I just said something for fun, but like I. It's like, like Sa Sergeant Lieutenant... Major General Sir, or something like I that. I thought it was Lieutenant <laughs> Major General Sir. <laughs> Like it ended every, with sir, and that's all like I remember. Every rank you can imagine stuck together yeah. with sir at the end. It was real <laughs> ridiculous. Staff, staff <laughs> it was super ridiculous. Staff Lieutenant Colonel Major General or sir. Petty Officer John 117. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, no. This is command. This is Commander Grimm, and this is my favorite store in the capital. Please no. <laughs> We're not quite at that level yet. No. God. Anyway. Anyway. We leave. You leave. We leave. Cool. Yeah. You you step out into Silverbrook Hall. Uh, step outside, out into the, to the bright sunshine. Right. I'll just sort of look at. It's so bright. Kolaris to sort of lead yeah. the way to however we're dealing with this problem. Um, God, I guess probably our room is the best uh, place just to figure out the book situation, but after that, it's kind of just like, okay, cool. Bye, guys. <laughs> Chill out for the day. Yeah, like, uh, basically, if you guys want to go back to the room and talk about stuff, you can, but yeah, the rest, the rest of the day is yours. Yeah, I think that's the best. Tell They're me all nice. the They're not the... my secrets to tell. I'm not back gonna in the room. do that. Back in the room. Uh, back yeah. in the room. Yeah, you you take head back to the tavern. You're in the in the tavern. Right. 
So what now then? Well, well first of all, we need to decide what we want to do with the book. Um, um, originally, well, originally I would have said find someone we can trust, but now I'm given the gravity of the situation, I'm wondering if it's best the book no longer exists. Uh, the book still has its uses. Yeah, I don't know but, about just destroying it. Honestly, we could just give it to Lefari, and she'll probably, she might make another sword and spend like another thousand years doing it, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, out of character, you don't know how long it took her, so... Well, it was probably um, not a thousand years. Um, yeah. So I don't well, know. I think, he, I think he would have exaggerated and said a thousand years nope. anyway. Yeah. Also sure. sure. Exaggeration is perfect. She told us at some point that she spent like two centuries working on it. Yeah. I think yeah, you I told Kalaris, didn't you? I don't think you told everybody. Oh, uh, maybe. Oh, I have yeah. no idea. I think I said. I don't think we. I don't think she told us. Uh, there was. Because Fondal. Uh, oh, no, no. Like... Yeah, yeah. Because it was when, when they gave you the, the head. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Sorry, uh, carry on. But yeah. But yeah. Um, so I. This is the thing. If this is such a serious situation, and these artifacts are half as powerful as this is being said, I would still. Well, I'd rather know more new ones were brought into creation, and therefore the book that tells you how to bring them into creation should not be able to be read by anyone. Well, the thing is, the biggest issue was the people she's turning in the other items to might like to use it to mass produce them which is not what we want regardless of who it is if Lothari takes it hopefully she'll make maybe one more or just improve the sword she already has and at least we know we can trust Lothari I love that you're talking about her like she's not here. Sorry. I was say, I know that, yeah, sorry, I remember that she also the room. Sorry, that we can trust her. I say looking at Lothari. Look, I, don't know, I, can, I can assure you that this is only a personal curiosity of mine. A book can be stolen. I mean, looks still a pile of, pile of ash cannot. I invite, I invite anybody to try. Like, a pile of ash has, like, destroying knowledge can, can bring severe consequences with it. Didn't you read uh, Fahrenheit 451? <laughs> uh, wait, that book doesn't exist. Yeah, you, you, you go around the table. Nobody has read this book. <laughs> what is this book you speak of? <laughs> what? What is this thing? Is it, a, is it something to do with the fucking realm of fire? Is, is that what this is? Sure. Anyway. <laughs> It's a it's a Ooh, book by a uh, Eladrin uh, uh, teen fiction author. Eladrin wow. teen wow. fiction author. Are wow. you calling Ray Bradbury teen fiction? <laughs> no, I'm I'm calling this book that you've just created in my universe teen fiction. Oh my god! Hey, awesome. <laughs> amazing! I, look, we have other books to be talking about. And uh, well, I was going to say, as. Well, as capable a guardian as Athari may well be, she is not immortal. Well, no, but neither are any of us. Look, nobody, so nobody yet. There would be no, there would be no guardian. So, rather than worrying about who would take it after us, surely this is the safer option. It would make you comfortable. It. Once I am done with it, I could destroy it. I know. I feel like it will be a waste of such of, of knowledge. I would not call this a waste of knowledge, given what the knowledge is. So, well, like this same knowledge could be used to save people. Like we're now we're hiding it just to make sure nothing bad happens. It's... But like in that case, like. We, yeah, if somebody hit the recipe for a sword, so to speak, um, like, and somebody else finds the recipe or discovers it, then you're suddenly stuck with a problem. Now at least you have something to fall back on if uh, we ever 
face a situation that is dire beyond our wildest imagination. <laughs> I will mention as well that just because the book contains the secrets of making weapons doesn't mean that's the only property of the we of the material. Mm. Right. I, I guess... don't like the idea of destroying it personally. Okay. But Yeah, I'm kinda with Polaris. Yeah, I I feel like it's like destroying it like it's just as big of a danger as just leaving it around. I guess then one day we'll look at Athari and like and like and just say And who will see this book when once you take it? These eyes are mine. Oh. And, and, I you, and you swear this. Well, unless my assistant gets a little bit nosy, but Look, but Fondal. Fondal, Fondal already doesn't like that response. <laughs> she laughs. Sorry, sorry so, laughs. And she's just like, and she says, "I will keep it safe. No one, no one who I wouldn't trust will see it. And at most, for this one person." Oh. Like, and my only concern. Fondal, like we're gonna keep it around. We're gonna someone pass it on to. No, my concern, my concern though with that is that one, that one extra person may not sound like much, but that one other person could tell another, and another, and so on. So there's plenty of people out there that could do that right now, but like, if rumors exist for anything. And the, the the big advantage with Slifari is, uh, I doubt she's gonna remain in one place for the rest of her life. That that doesn't sound like her. Well, certainly is not. I guess after a while of thinking, one day I will just say, "Very well then, you'll trust it to your hands." Right. You know, maybe, eyes. maybe she'll find uh, another good use for it, for the the black steel. Yeah, that's the point. Oh, self-eating armor. Self-eating. <laughs> I heard self-eating. Not I heard self-eating too. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> armor's like, already okay. insanely warm. Do you really want to make it warmer? Oh my god. Uh, anyway. Maybe you're cold all the time. I don't know. <laughs> Shit's weird. Cold yeah. places do exist in the world. Also that. Vondal lived in one. He lived in one wearing armor. He still wouldn't want armor. I, I, I doubt he'd, he'd still want armor that was fucking heated himself for him. Man, yeah, I can't wait for you guys cold, to go to Kalaris' tropical homeland and wear armor. <laughs> I'm yeah, so yeah. excited. Oh god. I'm really not. Anyway. Oh god. But yeah, Vondal's just to say, as much as there is a small part of me that is curious, the rest of me would rather not know any f any further developments you may have regarding this topic. And with any luck, uh, a drink will help me forget some of this. So if we're done, wow. I will be heading back downstairs. Yeah, I hand the book off to Lothari. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, then, I guess... before before oh. you take off, I can see if I can see anything that inspires me to something else, perhaps. Mm. Yeah, not that I'm not I'm not actually gonna look actively for something like uh, out of character, but sorry, what was this question? Yeah. Uh, no, I was asking uh, Lefari if I could have a look at the book because um, I guess. Or, or Grim is kind of interested in just seeing what kind of uh, like what their goal was, or seeing what they. Oh no, wait! I can't actually read it. Yeah, because an elvish. Mind. You can't read it. Yeah. You'd have to get you have to get one of the elvish speaking people to read it to you. Bedtime yeah. story. 
And you, even That's then, some of the nuance would be lost. Yeah, and it's the nuance I was looking for. Never mind. If there's nothing else, uh, Rundle's gonna go downstairs and order a few drinks. Oh, I just realized. We should probably look for a container for you, Mafari. Um, because I have no idea how we're gonna get you to safely transport those rocks. Or that ore. Oh, true. Because I would I'd make, uh, like to make sure we keep enough on us to just use as a campfire or something just to eat ourselves. So I imagine you can cook food and stuff on them. But yeah. Well, you guys can have fun sorting that out with the rest of your day. I like that you guys are so insistent, well, Grim is so insistent on using these rocks as a magical campfire, when you have the ability to just magically create I fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah, but just, like, I'm like... Grim, like, Grim is thinking about himself, too. He can't do that. <laughs> now he can! <laughs> like, uh, With sure. the power of magic, anything is possible. Sure, if our spellcasters are fine, sure. But if he's ever has to like rely on himself, he's screwed. To that is magical fair. fire. I should I should get you a How often do you need magical fire? A custom magic item that is just a small metal box. <laughs> and when you flick it open, there's a little flame in there. <laughs> Make him a lighter. You know Wait, no, you can do that anyway, can't you? I, I can yeah. do that. Yeah, make you can lighter. literally make a know. fucking zipper lighter. Oh yeah, my to god. To be fair though, we have tinder boxes. Yeah, he, but he, you have fire. Fire. he wants yeah. to make magical fire. Yeah, but see, here's the difference. Fire Magic versus warm rocks. Warm rocks have a lot of different uses. I... Okay. okay. So, no, before before everything... we take a brief break, so Vondala's getting drinks, the rest of you are, yeah. well, Grim and Lothari are going on an expedition to try and find a way to store these rocks. Mm -hmm. What do the rest of you want to do? I would like to talk to Polaris. Okay. You would like to talk to Polaris? Okay, that sounds like a scene. That so, was such a grandiose well, thing. I know! I was like, wow! Oh, yeah, you would like to talk to Polaris. Oh, I just wanted to know if I could get javelins here. Uh, <laughs> I just want to get javelins! <laughs> yeah, you can, you can definitely go and look for javelins. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, we'll take a brief break and we'll be right back. Um...